In this lesson, we are going to learn how to derive the formula for the RMS value of a sine wave. So let's look at how we are going to do that. The RMS value represents the voltage value of an AC signal, which is equivalent to the DC voltage. So that's what the RMS value of a sine wave is. So let's look at how we are going to derive the formula for the RMS value of a sine wave. To do this, we first of all have to calculate for the squared area of the sine wave. Then after that, we divide by the period. And after dividing by the period of the cycle, then we are going to take the square root of it and then now give us what the root mean squared value of the sine wave. So let's look at how we are going to do this. The expression of the area for the sine wave is giving us Vm sine omega t. Okay, it's giving us what Vm sine omega t. Okay, so where omega is the angular frequency. Okay. Angular frequency. And then the t is the time. Okay, it's too close. Okay, so I can write this area here. Okay, this expression in a different form. You know, angular frequency equals 2 pi f. Okay, and it's measured in radians. Okay, 2 pi f. So you can write the expression for the area as area equals Vm sine 2 pi ft okay and this vm here is the maximum voltage or the peak voltage okay maximum voltage okay so what i'll do here is that i'm going to represent so it's supposed to be t here i'm going to represent 2 pi ft with theta okay so that's proving for the formula will be easy for us i'm going to represent what 2 pi ft with what theta so we are therefore going to have the air to equal to what vm sine theta okay so that's what we have now okay so let's continue so all you have to do is to calculate for the area of what the sine wave okay and then looking at this sine wave here it is symmetrical which means what you have on the positive half you have same on the negative half so when i calculate for the area of the positive half and then i calculate for the area of the negative half and i add them it is going to give me the total area to be what zero so for this reason i'm going to calculate for the area of what only the positive half and then you are going to use that to find the to derive the formula for the rms value so calculating for the area of the positive half, we are going to have area to be equal to a squared. Okay, because we are going to square the the area. Okay, we are going to square the area. So that's why I can have a squared here. Okay. For this not to confuse us, let me write it this way. Half area to be equal to a squared, right? And then that will be equal to Vm sine theta. Okay, R squared. Okay, so this is the area. Okay, so we are going to find the area from 0 to, what? to pi. Okay, so you have area to be equal to the integral from 0 to pi. Vm sine theta. Okay, all squared, the theta. Okay, so let's write this. Okay, I can write this as integral from zero to pi, vm squared, sine squared, theta, the theta. Okay, so this vm that I have here is just a constant, so I can bring it to the left side of the integral symbol. So I have what vm squared 
integral from 0 to pi sine squared theta d theta. So this is what we have now. So what I'll do is that I'm going to substitute a trail identity for sine squared theta. Okay, so let's look at how you are going to do that. So from trigonometry, sine squared theta is the same as 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by 2. Okay, and I can write this as 1 over 2 multiplying 1 minus cos 2 cos 2 theta. Okay, so what I'll do is that I'm going to substitute this value here in place of what sine squared theta that we have here. So when you do that, you're going to have the area to be equal to bm squared integral from 0 to pi. They are going to substitute the identity here, okay, in place of what sine squared theta. That will give us what? Half 1 minus cos 2 theta, d theta. So this is what you have now. So what you have here, this half here is just a constant, so you can bring it to the left hand side of the integral symbol. So when I do that, this will give me the area to be equal to dm squared over 2, taking integral from 0 to pi. Then I have 1 minus cos 2 theta d theta. So Let's take the integral and then see what you get. So I have Vm squared over 2. Then I have taking integral of 1, which is a constant to assume the value of the variable. So that will be what theta. So the integral of 1 gives us what theta. Minus the integral of what cos 2 theta, and that, that will give us what sine 2 theta. Right by the derivative of what cos inside, which is what the derivative of 2 theta, and that will be what 2. So divided by 2. Then I have 0 and then pi here. So we've taken the integral. Okay, so let's continue. So we have the area to be equal to Vm squared over 2. Okay, then I have theta minus sine 2 theta divided by 2. That's from 0 to pi. Okay, so now let's continue. Okay, so from here, I'm going to have the area to be equal to Vm squared over 2. Then I'm going to simplify what you have in the square bracket. So that would pi minus sine 2 pi, okay, divided by 2. All this in brackets minus zero minus sine two multiplying zero all divided by two. So let's simplify this. So I have Vm squared over two sine two pi divided by two will give us zero. Okay, so let's do that and see sine two pi. Divide by 2, that gives us 0. Before you do this, make sure you set your calculator to radians. So you can do that by pressing the shift key and then mode key, then you choose the fourth option. Let's continue. So sine 2 pi divided by 2 will give us what 0. And also sine 2 multiplying 0 divided by 0 also gives us what 0. So then you are going to have what vm squared over 2 multiplying what pi. Right. So you are going to have vm squared pi over 2. So this is the area. So after getting the area, I'm going to find the average. Okay, so that will be the area divided by the period. Okay, so the average be equal to the area divided by the period. And the period in this case will be pi. Okay, the period in this case will be pi. So Let's go ahead and do that. Let me fill up some space. Okay, so you know the area to be Vm squared over 2 pi, right? 
So that we will divide by the period pi. So I can write this as dm squared over 2 pi times 1 over what pi. Right? When I do this, this pi will cancel out this pi. So I therefore have what? dm squared over what? 2. So that will the average. Okay, or the mean. Okay, we can also call this as what the mean. Okay, so now what you are going to do is that you are going to take the square root of what the mean. Okay, you are going to take the square root of this and then that gives us what the root mean squared value. So let's go ahead and then do this. So I have the RMS value, which is the root mean squared value to what the square root of what the mean value. So that was VM squared divided by 2. This is the same as what the square root of VM squared divided by the square root of 2. This squared here will cancel the square root. So then I'm going to have what VM divided by what the square root of what 2. Okay, and then you can further write this as let me free up some space. Okay, we can further write this as 1 over the square root of 2 multiplying with vm okay, and 1 over the square root of 2 in decimals will be 0 0.7071 okay so that multiplying with vm so this will be the formula to calculate for the root mean squared value of a sinus shader voltage then we for sinus current we are going to have 0 0.7071 im okay where im is the peak current okay so we're going to do the same formula to calculate for the rms value of a sinus current okay you can also write this as im divided by the square root of what two that gives us what i RMS. Okay, so this is the formula for the root mean squared of a sinusoidal voltage or sinusoidal current. Okay, I'm going to use this formula here. Let me write it here. So the RMS value will be equal to Vm over root 2. And then if it is current, that would Im over root 2. I can choose to change it into decimals. Okay. So now, with this understanding, we are going to try our hands on some few examples. Okay, so now, let's take the following examples. Okay, so let's try our hands on these three examples. I'm going to solve the first two and then you try your hands on the third example. Okay, so with example one, we've been giving the current equal to 10 root 2 sine 100 pi t okay so now what you are supposed to do is that you are going to calculate for the rms value and then frequency for each of what the quantities that we have here okay so each one they are going to calculate for the rms value and then the frequency Okay, so that's what I'm going to calculate for for these three examples. Okay, so for the example one, we are going to calculate for the what RMS value and then the frequency of the quantity i. So let's look at how you are going to do this. So this is current given here. Okay, we're given that the current equals what 10 root 2 sine 100 pi t. So how are you going to find the RMS value and then how are you going to find what the frequency? To find the RMS value, you have what I RMS equal to what IM, which is the maximum current by about the square root of what two. So in this case, comparing it to the general formula that I have here, okay, to this general formula, I'm going to rewrite it. In this case, it will be I okay will be equal to I M 
sine 2 pi ft okay so this is the, the general formula that you are going to compare this quantity here to so doing this you see that i m will be equal to what this term with two that we have here right so i am what ten ten with two okay so we have the i r m s to be what ten with two divided by what with two and then that gives us what the i r m s to be equal to what ten amperes okay so that will be the value for the i r m s and then from the general formula, the F there represents what frequency, which is measured in hertz. So to calculate for the frequency, we are going to compare to the what current given here. Okay, so let's look at how you are going to do this. So we we'll have two pi F to be equal to what hundred pi. Okay, so I divide both sides by two pi. I divide both sides by two pi. And I do this. This power will cancel this pi also, and then 100 divided by 2 gives us what 50. So I'm going to have the frequency f to be equal to 50 hertz. So that'll be the frequency for the current that you have here. We are going to do the same for the second question also, which is a voltage. So you don't you are going to write the general formula for it, and then you do comparison and then calculate for the RMS value and then the frequency. So we have the voltage to be equal to 20 sine 100 pi t. Okay, in this case, the general formula will be V will be equal to what? Vm sine 2 pi ft. So we're creating for the root mean square value, which was Vrms. That will be equal to the peak value, which is what Vm about root 2. And then comparing this quantity here to the general formula given, we see that Vm equals what 20. So we're going to have the VMS to what 20 divided by the square root of 2. All right, and 20 divided by the square root of 2 will give me the value of 10 root 2. And in this mass, that will be equivalent to 14.142. Votes okay, so that will be the value for the what which means squared voltage. And then, calculating for the frequency, we are going to have 2 pi f to be equal to what 100 pi, dividing both sides by 2 pi because we want to find the frequency f. 2 pi, this will cancel out this, and then I have pi cancel out pi, and then f will be equal to what 100 divided by 2, and that gives us what 50. Yes. So that will be the frequency for this voltage quantity also. So I'll leave the last question for you to try your hands on. Thank you very much for watching this video.